So in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to compile all of the information we've uh, learned so far this year in our various lessons and units and activities into a set of facts about functions. And in Algebra 1, we study three families of functions in depth. Uh, the first family is the linear family. And so if we look at what we did in the beginning of the year, the unit on sequences, we actually studied linear uh, linear functions when we dealt with sequences. In particular, we looked at arithmetic sequences. And arithmetic sequences are linear functions. And in the context of a function, you think of an arithmetic one as being a function whose domain has been limited to the natural numbers, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth. And from arithmetic sequences, we learned a, a lot. We learned that they had uh, this common difference. That was the number you had to add each time to find successive terms. And then they had an apparent formula that was a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the difference times n minus 1. OK, and so the next thing we did was we moved on to big graphs. So in the big graphs unit, we found a couple of things out. Or in the big graphs activity, we discovered a few things. First, uh, we learned that the parent function of the linear family is y equals x. And to clarify, a parent function is the most basic type of equation that still belongs to a particular family. So the most basic, basic equation you can have, you can write that's still linear, is this y equals x. And then in addition, we figured out that all of their graphs were, were lines. Now they weren't all lines, vertical lines don't count, horizontal lines don't count in the linear family, but ones that were increasing like so, and ones that were decreasing like so, were linear, and that's actually where the name came from. And then we also looked at equations uh, in general when we did big graphs by looking at different versions or the offspring equations, and I could add things to them, I could subtract, I can multiply, I can divide uh, numbers, not other variables, and I can get equations that looked like this, um, where I had some number well, uh, plus that difference times an x minus 1. So uh, we just converted this into y equals, where this number here was the value when x is 0, or not 0, when x is 1. And then that's the common difference, the same thing. Instead of an n, we use an x. And we wrote equations that were like this. They were multiplied by x. Um, some number was multiplied by x, we could subtract out things in parentheses, we could add things. And then we also saw equations that were of the form y equals mx plus b, where we just multiplied x by something and we added uh, some number to it. Um, then after big graphs, we talked about functions. And these, of course, will pass the vertical line test. We talked about finding their domains and ranges. And later, we talked about, oh, in terms of domain and range, since I'm compiling all the information, if I have a f just some linear function, the domain of the linear function in general is all reals, and the range is also all reals. And then we moved on to the transformations. And transformations were basically take an equation and do things to the equation to change the way the graph looks. And for transformations for linear, let's remember what the transformations told us. Uh, the transformations told us that if I have some linear function f of x, um, if I wanted to move f of x up or down, I had to add a quantity to the function rule. And if I added a positive number, it would move the graph up. And if I added a negative number or subtracted a number, it would move the graph down. And then I had the left or right uh, translation. And to move a graph left or right, I had to add or subtract something inside the rule. So I'd have to replace the x with some quantity x plus something or x minus something. And if I wanted to change it from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, then I would have to multiply the rule by a negative number. And then finally, if I wanted to change the steepness of the function, I had to multiply the function rule by some non-zero constant. Um, and if I use, if the absolute value of that constant was greater than 1, I get a steeper line. Um, if I had a constant that was between 0 and 1, or between 0 and negative 1, it would decrease the steepness. So we've been actually looking at linear functions for a while, and this is so far all we know about them. 
Um, now, as the year progresses, and particu particularly chapter three of the book, we're going to be looking at uh, linear uh, functions in greater depth. We'll be spending several six weeks on linear functions, actually. Um, and we're going to expand on this knowledge. So this is what we know right now, though. We know that the sequences have a domain of natural numbers. They're called arithmetic. Here's how I write the apparent formula. I can convert the apparent formula into an equation. I know that graphs um, are lines that are not horizontal or vertical. The parent is y equals x. The domain of all linear functions in general are both all real numbers. And then if I want to move the graph around, up or down, I add something to the rule. Left or right, I replace the x with uh, x plus or minus a number. If I want to change it from an increasing to a decreasing or the other way around, I multiply the rule by negative. And if I want to affect the steepness, I multiply it by a non-zero constant. That's quite a bit, but there's a lot more to come.